Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about an exciting new development in the Ethereum world, smart contract wallets and account abstraction. Current wallet applications, known as externally owned accounts, are client applications that live off-chain. In contrast, this new approach suggests building wallets as smart contracts on the blockchain. This approach offers a lot of options and flexibility in terms of the wallet's design and development, and enables a lot of exciting new use cases as well. We'll talk about some of the benefits of account abstraction, and then we'll take a look at the primary architecture proposed by EIP4337, the leading proposal behind account abstraction. So if that sounds good, stick around and let's get right into it. So for the last couple of months, I've been working for a smart contract wallet startup company called StackUp. This company is run by a couple of really sharp dudes, John and Hazim, whose previous endeavors include working in fintech and designing and building rockets and space vehicles. Yes, really. They've built one of the first implementations of a smart contract wallet per the EIP4337 proposal. It's been a great experience working alongside of them and learning more about this fascinating technology. StackUp is a completely open source project, so if you guys are interested in learning more about account abstraction, I highly encourage you to study the code in their GitHub repositories and also to join their growing Discord community. This is a really active community and the StackUp team is highly involved and responsive and glad to help you out with any questions about account abstraction or general help with setting up your StackUp wallet. Okay, so let's start by going over some of the benefits of account abstraction. Number one, custom signature schemes. EOAs are locked into using the elliptical curve digital signature algorithm. Not that it's a bad algorithm, it's incredibly secure, but with smart contract wallets, you can use whatever signature scheme you can conceive of and code in solidity. This may include more efficient, simple, or more secure signature schemes such as multi-sig, social recovery wallets, or quantum resistant signature schemes. A multi-sig wallet is where n number of signatures would be required in order to access the wallet. So for example, if you were to lose one private key or if it were to become compromised or stolen in a phishing attack, the attacker would still not be able to access your wallet. You could also include a so-called social recovery feature in your wallets. This is where a user has one primary key, but in the event it's lost or compromised, the wallet owner can request pre-designated guardian accounts to replace the key with a new one. This is a great feature because it means you don't have to worry about losing all the funds in your wallet if something happens to your one private key. Benefit number two, multi-operations or atomic operations. So with this architecture, you can batch together multiple user operations into a single transaction. For example, to transfer an ERC20 token on someone else's behalf, you would normally have to call the token's approve function followed by the transfer from function in two separate transactions, since the last one would have to refer to the first. This makes for an awkward user experience in a lot of cases. And so with account abstraction, this can all be done in one step, greatly simplifying things for the user. Benefit number three, Paymaster. A Paymaster is a construct that allows for gas abstraction, which provides greater flexibility in terms of paying for Ethereum gas fees. For example, you can choose to sponsor gas payments on behalf of your users. This could help remove onboarding friction or serve as some sort of incentive or reward. You can also allow users to pay for gas fees with a token of their choice or even off-chain with a credit card, providing greater accessibility for users who don't yet hold any crypto at all. Another benefit, future-proofing. There's a long-term vision in the Ethereum community to move away from EOAs and smart contract wallets are in alignment with that vision. Finally, this paradigm provides a universal smart contract wallet interface. So why is this good? Well, if there's a universally accepted pattern for coding wallets as smart contracts, then that means there's a, more of a community effort behind um, identifying bugs and security vulnerabilities, as well as making it easier for developers to uh, extend these sort of contracts. So EIP slash ERC4337 all started with this blog post by Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin. Initial thinking on how to achieve account abstraction, including several earlier proposals, relied on the idea of making consensus layer protocol changes to Ethereum. However, with most Ethereum development being focused on the upcoming Ethereum 2.0 merge, 
it's unlikely that any further changes will be possible anytime soon. So the 4337 proposal describes an alternative approach to account abstraction without the need to make core protocol changes, but rather by introducing some new constructs in a higher level system that sits on top of the existing Ethereum infrastructure. So let's take a look at the proposed architecture. So first of all, EIP-4337 introduces a new object called a user operation. This is analogous to a vanilla Ethereum transaction and basically is an object that tells the wallet what the user wants to do. It contains a signature and other data for verification as well. So right here, I'm looking at the stack up code and I'm looking at their implementation of a user operation, which you can see is a struct in Solidity and this is implemented per the EIP-4337 interface. So we'll go over a couple of the key fields here. Uh, first of all, we have sender, that is the address of the wallet performing the operation. Okay, then we have nonce. Um, this is sort of a protection against replay attacks. So the nonce is verified by the wallet code and then incremented. Um, down at the bottom here, we have the signature. Okay, this is uh, basically to verify that the, um, the sender of the user operation is who they say they are the correct user. Uh, we have init code. This is code that can be used to actually create a wallet on the fly if the user does not already have one. So the wallet can be generated in real time here. And then we have call data. This is basically where the actual intent of the user is encoded. So what the user is requesting the wallet to do. Um, there's some fields here related to Paymaster and the rest uh, have to do with gas, which we won't go over in any great detail. But if you want a full description of all the fields here, um, you can definitely find them at the ERC-4337 spec, which you can find the link for that in the description of this video. So user operations are created and signed by users and then sent to a special user operation mempool, which is similar to and parallel to the existing Ethereum transaction pool. A special entity called a bundler listens into this mempool, and as new user operations are added, they get picked up and bundled into a single entity called a bundle transaction. From there, they're included into, the, into an Ethereum block, just like any other plain vanilla transaction. The incentive structure and fee prioritization logic would be similar to how miners choose transactions from the existing trans transaction mempool today and include them into the blockchain. Now, these bundlers, they can be, well, ideally, they'll, they would be miners, um, but that may not have happen right away with this new uh, architecture. They could be miners, they could be a specialized class of miners called MEV searchers, uh, which are miners that look for ways to profit from the blockchain by basically reordering, inserting, or censoring transaction in the blocks. Or they could be your own application code. So a lot of options there. All right, now let's take a closer look at the actual bundling process. So two smart contracts are needed with this setup. Number one, the wallet smart contract, and number two, a special entry point contract that contains most of the logic and kind of orchestrates the user operation, validation, and execution. This contract is a singleton, meaning that only one exists on, on the chain. So the bundler will route user operations through the entry point contract by invoking a special handle ops function, which takes an array of user operations as its first argument. It performs two loops on this array, number one, a validation loop, and then number two, an execution loop. Let's take a peek at the stack up code to see what this interface looks like. So this is the stack up entry point interface, and as you can see, there are two required functions here. Uh, simulate validation basically uh, runs a simulation to make sure that the user operation is going to succeed. And then handle ops is the function that uh, I just described where it takes an array of user operations and then a redeemer address, which is actually the address of the bundler so that um, they can be compensated. So this function is basically the entry point of the entry point. Now, uh, remember, this is just the interface. So if you want to actually see how this gets implemented, you can always refer to the entry point SOL file. And um, here's the handle ops function. And as you can see, it contains two for loops. Uh, the first one is that verification loop, and the second one is the execution loop. All right, so here's a diagram of the bundling process showing the entry point contract's interaction with the wallet contract. So during the validation loop, the wallet contract's validate user op function is called. And this function does three things. First, it validates the signature. Then it verifies and increments the nonce in order to protect against replay attacks. If the validation was successful, it goes ahead and pays the fee to compensate the bundler. 
If validation was not successful, it should throw an exception and revert the transaction. After that, the execution loop starts and each user operation is executed one by one, refunding any unused gas back to the wallet. And again, taking a look at the stack up code base, we can see what the wallet interface looks like. Uh, so here we have interface iWallet and there are two required functions per the 4337 spec. Uh, the first one is validate user op. Okay, and remember we're looping through all of the user operations and then calling this function to do the validation. Um, and then once the validation succeeds, we, we start the second loop, the execution loop, uh, and execute user op is called to actually perform the action that the, the user requested, basically. And here is the call data, which uh, in which is encoded the actual user intent here. And as always, if this is just the interface, if you want to see the actual implementation, you can pop open the, the wallet.soul file, and you can study uh, the contents here. Again, all this code is open source and you can find it on StackUp's uh, GitHub page. So this, this first diagram here basically shows uh, the most simple flow uh, for account abstraction. Now, if you have a paymaster involved, then um, you know, there's, there's one extra step in order to get the gas abstraction. So next, let's take a look at the flow with the paymaster included. All right, so in this diagram, we've added an additional paymaster layer. In this flow, the signature verification proceeds as usual only the wallet doesn't pay for the transaction. It checks if the paymaster is valid and staked first. So during the verification loop, the handle ops execution must also check that the paymaster has enough ETH staked with the entry point contract in order to pay for the operation. Then the paymaster smart contracts validate paymaster user op function is called. This function determines whether or not the paymaster agrees to sponsor the user operation. If not, the transaction is reverted. If so, the paymaster pays the bundler for the transaction using a portion of the staked ether. All right, guys, well, uh, that completes the video for today. That is all I wanted to cover. This was a high level overview of account abstraction and smart contract wallets. So if this is an area that you're interested in, um, you'll find some helpful links in the video description to the Vitalik Buterin blog post, a uh, link to the EIP 4337 spec, and also some links to the StackUp codebase at GitHub and their Discord community. So um, highly recommend you check out all those links to learn more about this interesting topic. All right, in the meantime, guys, don't forget to take it easy and I will catch you in the next one. Take care, bye.